Okay, we got <coughs> Hello! Oh my god, it's been... Sorry for the delay, I had a lot of trouble connecting the cameras. Um, firstly, announcements. Uh, I'm not sure if you can tell, but I have a very crooked voice today. I've been sick for the whole month, the whole month, for the whole week. I'm actually not feeling that well today, but it's very cloudy and it's just the perfect day to do a painting. Okay, um, let me put a oh, top camera. <gasps> oh no. Oh. I just want to make it, let's bigger, okay. Like rather than having both, like I'd rather only you see my painting rather than my face. That'll be better. <laughs> okay, um, let me use the reference picture. I'm gonna start by doing a light sketch with my pencil. Um, this is 5H. I recommend using with watercolor paper a light pencil. Just make sure because it's so hard and you need to be very precise, oh sorry, you need to be very careful with your lines because if you try and press the pencil in the paper it will eventually kind of leave marks even if there's no um, charcoal. <coughs> oh sorry, <clears throat> okay, let's start. I simply, because I like uh, always starting with the painting rather than the drawing, I am just just want to just show a few shapes. Just make sure it's on. Okay. In university, whenever I wanted to start a drawing, I would always start by um, kind of putting where the limit of the drawing is going to be. And obviously, because this reference picture is just finished down here, you don't really need it. But maybe mark where you think the arms are going to get. A lot of people work with shapes. I kind of want to go my way and just follow the lines of the face. Yes, like it's very, um, it's been crazy because with COVID and everything, it's kind of the worst moment to get sick. You get all scared, not scared, but maybe aware of what you're doing and why you shouldn't be sick and going to the doctors and everything. It's just a really bad moment to get sick. Who is painting along today? Hopefully everybody it doesn't have to be gouache you can use whatever support I mean, materials you want okay i'm just putting a line oh, i'm so nervous right now just because it did the camera work wasn't working and it's been a long time since i talked english it's, it's a bit a bit nerve-wracking sorry <laughs> like for those who don't know this, I am actually living in Spain, I am a Spanish artist, so today light is not going to be the best because it's afternoon close to night. I think I'm going to have to change the settings of my camera in a bit. Let me zoom in for a bit. The day couldn't really go any worse. Um, it is my mother's birthday today and we're having a huge family um, like coffee time and I'm here stuck in the like the most far away room in the house just I can give this class. Hopefully it will be worth it. <laughs> Gonna be a bit rough with the shapes. Okay. 
Okay, she has a very pretty neck and like collarbone area. I don't want to ruin it by being too quick. So just take your time on the drawing if you need a bit more time. Um, I feel her forehead is, needs to be bigger because she has a very sh triangle shaped face. <laughs> I always like drawing big hands, like rather than doing too small. I think it's very elegant to have big hands, so just... <laughs> I guess it's those, one of those cases where the painter, the artist, um, paints something that it's lacking from them. Like I, very, I have very small hands, like 12-year-old kid hands, so I, I, I kind of be a bit jealous of my paintings, I guess. You might be thinking, why is she drawing? Because I was singing out, I sang out for, sang in for a gouache painting and I just wanted to cool down a little bit with my nerves and just start with the drawing and then I'll introduce you to the gouache. Just one thing after another, I guess. Okay, those are huge hands. I think I, I just went a bit too far, but it doesn't matter. This is how I'm feeling today, so I'm just gonna just gonna work with it. Make it work. Okay. Oh my head. Okay. Getting there. Like I've, I think this, this, this is a stream. There's more people connected than I expected. I was struggling with the camera and everything. It wasn't working. So knowing that there were so many people connecting, it was. I didn't want to disappoint you. Um, there we go. Okay, I think this is way to this direction. Maybe I. Should I bring it right here? So just because I think that if I bring it too far, it will break the composition. Okay. It's likeness. What, Bonita? What do you mean by is likeness overall? Um, do you mean like what I feel about the picture, of the reference picture? And Christina, yes, we can see the recording later. I can see any time. I'm trying to reshape a little bit the shoulders so I'm not missing out this like structure. Okay, now with the fun bit, start with the face. Okay. 
Okay. If you hear a very loud voice in the background, that it's my uncle. I think right now he's like the oldest person in my family and has the loudest scream. Here in Spain, it's it's crazy. We don't talk, we scream. And for me, that I'm a bit more introvert and I kind of I struggle a lot with 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 like why my talking and everything. It's kind of overwhelming. creating something exactly similar no not at all like obviously um when you do when you do a painting and you're using a reference picture you're obviously going to look for something that you really like like a reference picture you think it's very beautiful so obviously you want to um kind of give the credit to the photographer or to the like handsomeness of the person you're drawing or to the building you're painting and something like that but i guess um Making your own little style in it, it's really important too. Like, um, I've always struggled with the thing is, with um, with what I feel of painting with reference. Obviously, I need to have a reference because it's really hard to do like a realistic kind of looking painting without it. But um, I feel like if you do it exactly as the reference picture, it's just not fun at all. It's, it's a very, it's like copying, I guess. So really try to bring whatever you like about the picture, show, and then add your own style. I think can, that will work, it doesn't answer, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm trying to do the lips. If you want to step, um, to take your time, or maybe don't do this step, just go through it, um, I'll catch you in a minute. Just want to make sure at least I have the basic in. So you get inspired by it, but you do own things. Yes, like I have a lot of inspiring things. Like uh, if, if you use Pinterest, I am, um, a crazy person in Pinterest. I have like so many boards and so many pictures and drawings and illustrations and paintings that I use as a reference. And when you're starting painting, you really can't think about um, being scared of copying. You just copy, just get the work you like from an artist and try to do the same thing over and over again. And if when you, whenever you think you're getting a bit toxicated about like, oh, I think I'm not doing my own stuff. I think I'm doing like a copy of someone, just just know that you're copying because you're trying to learn from someone you look up to. It's like this, I'm, I'm showing my style and I'm really um, kind of, how do you say? I'm, I would be glad if you do the same style as I am because I think I'm pretty good at this and if that is gonna help you maybe in one day do your own thing, I'll be great. I think I started out like this. I, I just analyzed whatever I liked from different artists and just try to copy whatever it was. Just don't, don't worry about that. And talking about this, I'm actually thinking about doing a very different thing in this um, in this class. Oh my God, what's wrong with her face? Oh no! <laughs> okay, this is really wrong. Let me let me try and sort what is wrong with this painting. Um, okay, I'm just gonna erase everything. Yeah, I think the problem is like the forehead and everything. It's just, I don't really understand it. Mm. Let me see where this goes. Doing the hairline, just to know where I can put the eye. Um, just straight line from here.
Doing very simple shapes for the eyes. <laughs> yes, I I feel like you need to concentrate a lot when I'm drawing. I, I think it's you need a lot more concentration when you are drawing rather than when you're painting. Especially because you're like looking at a picture for the first time and you kind of want to sort everything out before you you just start. Okay, let's redo the nose. <laughs> Problem solving. Um, I feel like I need to. Sh I need to shut up. <laughs> I was gonna tell story, but I'm just gonna leave it for just a minute. Just a minute. I will finish right away. Just a minute. Okay, I think those eyes are better. Let me zoom in. Oh, they're all downstairs eating cake without me. Okay, now with the eyes on, I can really um, see what's the trouble with the forehead. So, I'm going to do a straight line from here to the top of the forehead and then add like that little bump she has just here. I remember what I said about pressing too much the pencil. I think I'm going way too hard with it, so I'm just gonna let loose a little bit. Okay, now with the nose. Most gorgeous nose. Paint and talk at the same time and remember from your early life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, don't worry, Bonita. I'm getting there, so just a moment. Right, obviously, I want to show you how I paint rather than how I draw. So this step is kind of, I feel it's a bit um, life wasting, life wasting, time wasting. So I just want to be quick, and that's sometimes not the best, like not the best way of going through a painting. Starting out quick, just to jump to the painting, just take your time. Not like me. <laughs> okay, now with the lips. I think I'm gonna do her mouth a little bit small, even though I really like it, just because I think it's not gonna fit with the. It's not gonna fit the like the chin. Oh, I think I got it. It's not perfect. I think it's, it's a bit weird how it's shaped. Um, let me just see it in another angle. I think her eye is going too much upwards, so I'm just gonna... Uh, question, do you hear um, any loud noises in the background or do I have to run downstairs and just scream to my, to my little knees not to play the piano? <laughs>
Okay. I think I'm going to start with the painting. I think this area looks very weird. Oh my god. <laughs> Use a hairband. So I'm not, I don't know if you can tell, but um, no, you obviously can't tell. But the paper is very oh, far away from me, just so the camera kind of um, shows the paper rather than the table. So it's a bit more difficult than usual. Okay, she just needed a bit more head. Okay. Okay, for the, let me put a bit more brightness. For the painting, um, I'm gonna grab my gouache and using my ceramic palette, you can use whatever you want. Let me put this just here, so we can choose the palette correctly. We have red. I want to use it copper. This color perfect. Some pinks and a little bit of marine. Okay. Um. I think. And Okay, I'm gonna go with. I'm using a ochre. I can't really see. Black. Um, ultramarine blue. Turquoise. Um, carnicino. Fresh tint. It's kind of a pinkish uh, salmon rose. I think it's goes perfect with the picture. I have red. Yes, just red. And copper, which um, is not the perfect colour. I just bought it. I don't know why I bought it, but it's kind of a... Uh, in, in, the in, the, in the camera, it shows much redder than it actually is. It's much kind of a brown with a tint of uh, gold and a tint of red. So I'm just going to... Start putting in the palette. Just a tiny bit of each. Um, set them aside. Some black. I use very little black in my paintings. I don't know if you've noticed, but um, I don't recommend you trying one day painting with light colours and trying to find the darkest tone with those light colours. Like mix in it however you want so you can get the darkest tone, maybe a blue as a dark, something like that. Okay, got ultramarine. It's completely, completely dry. Oh my god. Don't know if this is a good idea. Oh, can't get it out. Okay, 
Hey, I guess we're not using ultramarine today. I wish we could, but we can't. Hopefully, yours is not completely dry. <laughs> yes, I, that's exactly the colour I was trying to describe it. Um, kind of a sienna colour. Potina Crunder. I think this one is going to be also dry, so... Bummer. <coughs> Can get a tiny bit out, just enough to get a few tones. Like, try to see the colours you were wanting to use for the picture. I don't know if you can tell, but I see a lot of gold, a lot of uh, light, cold colours, a lot of blue. Ah! Okay. What did you say? Quash colours on. They dry out fast. Yes, they do dry a little bit fast. I normally use like a spray, um, just like to spray it. Let me put the picture here. You normally spray them but because I don't have it here I'm just gonna have to remember to add a tiny touch of water on them. Uh, if you paint very quickly we will not have any trouble. Okay I've been using um, recently doing a new method of painting which I combine a lot of line work and uh, colour. So I've used it with oil, I don't know how it's going to work with gouache, so we're just going to try. Okay, well let me start with those tints. Sorry for that sudden brightness, okay. Just trying to sort what light I can get to work. Okay. Just a second, I need to a change my camera setting. The light is terrible. Okay, that will do. Sorry for that. Can you see all right? Okay. Okay. I'm going to start by Combining some of that copper with ochre. Ochre. Copper. Forgot to tell you my white is here. It's a bit dirty, but it works. So it's the best way of just grabbing a bit of white and just don't need to put it out. I'm going to add a bit of red, which is a bit more as pink, 
whenever you add a bit of white and a tiny bit of blue so we have kind of a light pink but a bit dirty like not pure a bit more yellow to the mix gonna get that this pink color a bit wet because it's already gone dry just got out from the tube because I want to keep it a bit quick um, I normally start with a very light color and then like work with it like slowly adding more uh, like um, consistency in the paint but I want to go straight with the consistency just right away so we can go a bit more quick Oh God, the reference picture is on the way. Oh, I don't know where to put it. <laughs> If you have any questions, just go forward. I'm looking at the screen. Doing a very warm shadow underneath the neck, like in the neck, and just adding a bit more blue just to add a bit more darkness. I'm gonna grab the thin paint paintbrush and I'm gonna do a few guidelines. I'm just gonna kind of draw the hand with some paint. Give a good combination between drawing and painting. 
change it a little bit the tone to blue I'm gonna grab a dark blue and do this hidden hidden shadowed <laughs> finger Can you explain the selection of where you're dropping off Lucy? Yeah, I'm sorry that the, the lighting is not really good. It's getting dark. Maybe I'm going to add a little bit more brightness. So, I have turquoise and next to it it's uh, red. Uh, oh god, black. So I'm just mixing both of them to get a dark, um, very dark blue almost like an indigo but like less saturated and using a normal consistency at the moment not very liquid it's not very thick just enough for it to spread and not great okay i'm gonna go with a bit a bit more I forgot to say to grab a piece of paper towel and just place it next to you. For those who don't know, if you're using a watery um, technique, it's very important to have um, just something to suck the excess water out. Okay, I'm going to continue drawing this finger. Okay, I'm combining, just got a very deep red, a bit a magenta kind of looking because as I said when you combine this red with any other kind of color including white it kind of look a bit more pink finding the perfect red is a bit difficult I'm adding a bit of copper just to get it a bit more vibrant well, not vibrant, but a bit deeper. Can add some white. Okay, so I explained it's very hard to get the red right, like to get a deep, perfect red. And you can tell it's looking a bit pink because when you add it with, when you add a lot of um, white, it kind of looks more like purple than even pink so I'm gonna add this purple working again I'm, I like re I really like jumping around painting um, just keep me uh, an eye open just where you think you you can add those colors Add a bit more white on the top. Thank you for the compliment, the nice kind words. <laughs> Adding a bit more white here, just to can see the highlight from the eye. Um, I'm gonna add a bit yellow to that copper so I can keep working in this area of the eye. 
has a very kind of warm orange color underneath the, sh like the brow. And I'm gonna try and blend it. Just added a tiny touch of blue just to get the color a bit less saturated, a bit more dirty, dirty, um, dirty colors. I can, I, this year I think I understood the importance of dirty colors in a painting. Like very recently, I thought my paintings were a bit too saturated, and I think I know why. So get I if if you use vibrant colors every paint like every part of the painting those parts where you want to really make them pop they won't you really need to play with with that so are you painting shadow shapes rather than face it's scary but interesting looking approach i know it's it, i i it's really hard to explain what i'm doing i'm just um because I'm working with an empty palette, I, I can really go from one colour to another. So I'm just watching the reference, like looking at the reference picture and trying to go where my eyes go, I guess. Like in the forehead, just in here, in this area, I see a, like a purple, purple, light purple. So now that I have a clear, like light color in my brush, I just need to add a tiny touch of red and I already have the color. It's a bit nerve wracking because obviously it can go wrong and I need to be okay with that. But just because today I'm in a sketchy live stream and I want it to work I, I i really can't really push myself back just because of it i just want to be a bit more brave with my like my approach so if it if it doesn't work i'm glad i shown my fails i guess hopefully i'm not the only like hopefully i'm the only one failing with this portrait but obviously you need to be like you need to understand it's not always going to work but that's a way of encouraging not as discourage i guess like whenever I, when i was little and i started a new painting i was really motivated by the idea is going to it was going to look so gorgeous when it was going to f <coughs> oh sorry like i i was very motivated with the idea it was going to look gorgeous when it was finished so sometimes whenever that um expectation didn't uh, land like it wouldn't work I would get very frustrated so rather than just thinking it's gonna go perfectly and it's gonna work because you're so good and rather than that just enjoy the process and have expectations of yourself but be okay with the idea it might not work and that's okay even rather than thinking, okay, I'm not going to do this never again. Like, obviously, maybe this time it didn't work, but maybe next one will. So it's just having that open mindset, I guess. Okay, I'm going to go and combine to get a dark purple go more to a cold than a warm setting okay i think that's too neutral i think um it's not colorful enough so i'm just gonna add a pop of red maybe a tiny touch of blue And maybe mix a little bit of yellow and white so we have a nice blend. And now, with the same, not the same, with a different brush, with a detail brush, make sure to clean it and to get the excess water out because the paint in the palette is already wet. So you can't really take your wet brush and just dump it in the in the wet paint is going to be too much. 
So with the same colour, I'm going to draw the face. And do the lips now that we're here. I'm going to go a bit of ochre. And continue the lining of the lips. I need a tiny touch of water. I'm going to go back to the pink. Filling in. It's a bit of a pink colour. This is looking a bit crazy right now, so I'm going to grab that dark blue we're working. I'm going to make it look a bit more turquoise than dark, and I'm going to draw the eyes just, I guess, to, how do you say, throw some light to the painting. <laughs> You're not going for precise colours, simply close to. Yeah, I'm going a bit um, overboard with the colours, I think. You can always go on top for more colours and make them work. I'm using a bit like a light blue for the hairline. Maybe add a bit more white because it's looking a bit dark at the moment. hope so. I really hope this is one of those cases, the process, you need to trust the process.
edit some yellow to the shadow. I can't really, can't really see with the highlight, but I'm just mixing a dark orange. Connecting it to the other side of the neck. Okay, I'm going to clean my brush and then I'm going to go with some white just to make this area right here. we got to a point because I have so many colors at the moment well not that many but because I have some colors on my palette I'm kind of working with them like mixing them on the way and don't be afraid of having like oh here are my cold colors and here are my white colors and my dark colors no no just mix them all around and have fun Okay, my camera battery just went off. I'm really sorry. I'm going to run to get a new battery. Sorry, sorry, sorry so much. Make sure to keep working. <laughs> Okay, sorry for that, wasn't expecting that to happen, okay, almost had a heart attack. I'm trying to get a more precise orange. So I'm just on the side of the, of the palette, mixing some ochre and some red. It's actually looking, because ochre is not a pure color of yellow, it's never gonna look as vibrant as a pure orange. So I'm just gonna wing it. So using water in gouache, it's so important because I don't know if you worked some, like if you ever worked with dry gouache, but it's so sticky. It's really hard to work with it. I'm just gonna say use the same orange and just paint the bottom lip. Can't really be very precise with this brush, so I'm just gonna. Thank you for preserving through the technical difficulties. <laughs> yes, we had too many technical difficulties today. Okay, I mixed a bit of that orange to that light blue I've used for the hairline. So, 
give me a very cool colour. Maybe add a little bit more white. A little bit more. Maybe add a bit more yellow. Oh, show you the colour. Can you see it? Looking. Oh my god, my camera is going crazy. It's a bit kind of a light, a uh, very light um, green. I really, really like this colour. So I'm gonna do the highlights in the dark area of this face with this colour. And adding a tiny touch of turquoise, I'm gonna do this side of the top lip. I think I went too dark, so I'm gonna add a bit more white. Sorry. gonna mix that color with with another color I don't know I can't really describe this colors they're so mixed out mm, I think I'm gonna go and I'm using ochre it doesn't work I can't get this yellow out oh my god <laughs> First ultramarine and now this. Okay, we have two options. I think I'm gonna go with this one because this is exactly the color I want to get. So I'm just gonna use it straight from the tube. Look how sticky this is. Much better. Okay. <laughs> Going with this orange to do the collarbone. in this side too. Okay. Get the excess paint out and mixing that orange with that light green we had to do a tiny blend around here. Mixing a bit more pink in it. Okay, there's a shadow going from the collarbone down. So I'm trying to do a dark purple and adding some yellow to warm it out okay I think I got the perfect color I think maybe add a tiny bit more red adding a little bit of water just to make it more workable, I guess. If I can keep working on it.
trying to do a more cold purple to make the shadow from this arm. Sometimes when I'm very lazy, I don't want to blend something, I just grab two colors and while they are dry, like wet, kind of try and add like um, colors between them. So you can do like an artificial <laughs> blend, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna grab the white and make a very light pink. Let's go in here. I, I really like the combination between um, like the unfinished uh, effect and the drawing and painting technique. So rather than leaving some areas just white, I like adding a very light color just so the unfinished areas is not permanent, like too many, too much. Hope you understand. For it to look intentional, I guess, that's what I meant. With this same pink, I added a tiny touch of white. I'm gonna do the ear, oh that's it, <laughs> gonna go to that orange and make this shadow in here. It's like whenever you have a color in your brush just try and find like more areas in the face you can use it. You could say this is like trying not to waste that much paint, which is just handy, I guess. I'm gonna grab the detail brush. Um, gonna go with a. I'm not sure what color I want. I'm making a good, good brown with that ochre. I think that will do. Okay, and now with a blue, I'm gonna go to the other side. Oh God. Would you recommend specific gouache paint you're using? Um, I feel very um, sorry to say this, but I haven't used any other kind of paint, so I can't really tell which one is best in, in the market. I've been using this uh, since 
maybe 2016 that's how much paint you actually need um i bought this set of 24 paint brush like paint tubes for i think 16 16 euros which is ridiculously cheap that's why i bought it um it's like a very very generic um uh, like brand it's talent talent art creation uh, and yes, I really recommend using this because for the money it's worth. Um, I've done very good things with it. Like obviously, if you are a professional painter, um, you in some point if you have the money, obviously spend it in good quality paint brushes and good quality paint. But um, I would consider myself a professional artist like I, I live of my art and I still haven't spent more than 20 euros in paint so no worries about worries about that just buy the most generic one you have in the market in your like local shops okay I'm gonna do Okay, there was a question at the beginning of the video, of the stream, that said if I'm going to be very like precise with the colours. Um, no, not at all. Not at all. I hope that's okay. If you want to make sure the colours are right, please take your time. But if I see a light, like a cold shadow, I'm just going to go straight with my Kulkwish. Obviously make it work like if, if you think it's too bright it's, it's too saturated like maybe fade it away with a bit of yellow with a little bit of rose pink trying to do a blend but i'm not really succeeding okay i'm gonna go pink do the shadow here Playing around with the textures and the brush movements because I'm trying to feel very free with this paint, with this painting. Just make sure you play with it as much as you want, as you can. Play with the brush movements, it's really fun. I really like the kind of droopy aesthetic. Okay, because it's kind of hard to see that line of the arm, I'm just going to make sure you can see, really see it. I'm just going to combine turquoise with a bit of black. I'm just doing a straight line. Okay, I'm and when I say straight, is less wobbly than mine. <laughs> With the same paint, as I said, don't waste it, and I'm going to do the nose, whatever it's called, nose or holes, <laughs> my nose, oh, how do, you, how do you call this? Forzas nasales, we say it in Spanish. I'm really sorry, my, my brain is going dead at the moment, it's really hard for me to talk, a terrible headache.
Oops. Using a great deal. Thank you for answering. I just started with using oils this last two months. Would you say they work a bit similar in wash? Any specific advice for starting? Things we do in oils, but I'm huge in hand wash. No stalls. Exactly. Thank you for answering. Um, for oil painting, I also started very recently. I I start I studied it in university, but. I gave up very quickly. Um, I thought it was very inconvenient, um, all the materials you needed and everything. But kind of falling in love again with it, I think it's it is similar to to gouache, but has its benefits. Um, you can let it dry, and you can paint so many layers on top, and that's the really fun bit of painting with oils, I guess. It's the possibility of just covering it and starting again, or adding like. Um, layers of white and working on it and I'm really looking forward and learning more techniques with with oils with gouache I feel like you have your limits um, it's very fun but you do have your limits and with oil painting I feel like you can have so many like aesthetics and, and techniques and different ways of using it okay Sorry to hear you're not feeling well. I know. Well, I'm feeling much better. At the beginning of the week, uh, on like Monday evening, I had a very, very high fever. I'm with other symptoms, but the fever just get me all the time. It's the worst. I forgot how bad having a fever is. I feel like dying. I've used water mixable um, oils. I, I think I didn't give it the right chance. I just gave up very quickly. Uh, but I don't know. I think it's because I'm slowly starting to really master oils. I think I still need a bit more to to know before starting with another like new way of painting with oils. I feel because I'm going very rough with this painting, I need to uh, give some precisions to some areas. So I just want to um, maybe finish, make it like a good aesthetic in some areas, just to make it look intentional. I think Sketchy needs to have a international, <laughs> uh, international class so I can give my class in Spanish rather than English. I can talk in, in English and that's a huge privilege. But for situations like this, oh, I wish I could speak English like Spanish. <laughs> I had a COVID test. I had it on Tuesday, and I'm vaccinated and everything, so I'm not really worried about that. And I had some symptoms that are not. Um, do you? I'm, I'm not. Don't, I'm not sure how you say it in English. In Spanish, we say anginas. It's when your throat get infected and you have pus in it. So that's not COVID. It's just very regular now in October and that the weather is changing and everything. A lot of my friends got it and it's just the same symptoms. Also I've not very not been very taking much care of my health recently. 
so it's just about time. I always, always get sick during the during the summer because I get cold or something. And because this summer I wasn't ill, now is the moment. <laughs> No, I don't have COVID. <laughs> don't worry. I'm feeling much, much better now. If you would have asked me last weekend, I would say no way. But I'm, I'm feeling much better by now. Blend. Go with the white from the tube just to make a nice blend because of the highlight in the cheek. Mm. I'll maybe add a bit more blue to this shadow. Like you obviously need to be a pain, like pay attention to the picture. But at this point, I'm actually just kind of um, jumping to one colour to another, just how I think it's it working. Right, just underneath here, you can see a shadow, and I think it's a bit more yellow than usual, and a highlight just underneath the lip. So I'm just taking care, just making sure not ruining that area. What do you mean by rigor? Rigor brush, what does that mean? This is becoming a, a English lesson for me. <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of the white of the eye. I'm not very, I don't really like it when you can see the contrast between the eye color and the white of it. Also, when you add the color in the whiteness of the, of the eye and you put a highlight in the, in the center, it kind of really pop, it really shows. Um, is it? It's not the longest I have. I have a brush that's almost this long. It's perfect for lines. Um, yeah, I would say it's pretty long. So you can use any kind of brush you want um, that allows you to do some detail. Okay, that was a drop of water, so I'm just gonna grab my paper towel and very lightly dab it to get the excess water out.
squash is usually pretty thick. I know, it's so sticky. Water to make colour more watercolour like. Yes, it's very important to use a bit of water. I recommend not using too much um, because it's very easy to make it look very bad. Like, the good thing about watercolour is that if you use the right paper and you know how it works, it's very easy to give very light colours, very light like layers. But with gouache, even though you're using like the best paper in the market and you try to use a big big brush, it's very easy to leave like brush strokes. And that's not what I'm looking for. So I'm just trying to go right with the consistency. I should add a few more shadows in your hand. Thank you for reminding me. I'm gonna go with a more warm shadow and do the thumb, which is also in shadow. Maybe add a bit more ochre. And now, I'm gonna clean a bit more my brush. Oop. Add it with a bit of white. Oh, I love that. Whenever this happens, um, let me show you. <laughs> you can't see, I'm sorry. <laughs> let me zoom in. Whenever those kind of things happen, when you want to give a brush strokes and it kind of look a bit rusty, you need to add a bit more water. So it kind of spread nicely throughout the paper. Okay, wait a second. My <laughs> my my computer is also dying. Let me just charge it for a minute. Okay, there you go. Another technical problem. The paper I normally use for gouache is the same I use for watercolour. I think the good thing is that with watercolour you need a more cotton paper, so it kind of sucks uh, the water in. It's like very easy to, like it, it doesn't take that long for it to dry, which is a very good thing. But with gouache, you can go with a cold press and a, and a hard press and hard press and a warm press, they, they both work really, really well. And I would say sometimes it's better working with less textured um, paper than when it has too many texture. That means you need a bit more water for it to uh, move around the paper and maybe it will look a bit bad. So I think I prefer using watercolour paper but with less texture. Just trying to get rid of the white of the of the face. Okay. 
at a tiny highlight around here. you might be annoyed question but do you prefer to paint with an underpainting or without that's not an annoying question at all it's pretty normal um well i kind of understand why you would need a underpainting but i think that's more used for like proper big big paintings like huge large scale paintings but with this i feel like because this is a sketch this is meant to be like a learning um, moment, I think uh, you can just get rid of that step just so you can go straight to the studying bit. Obviously, if you want to start a new project, um, this project is going to be like a two meter long painting with different colors and different um, shadows and everything. Obviously, maybe work in the underpainting, but for me, I have never used it. I sometimes, most often, I really regret it. But it's just how I worked. I never, I never did it. I probably never will. Well, I'm not going to say never. I might use it one day. But for now, I'm fine. Sorry if you can hear my heavy breathing. I can't really breathe through my nose right now. Oh, if I want the forehead to work, I feel it's looking a bit too chunky. The textures aren't working. Like I, I like when you can see the brush strokes, but not when they look that this bad. The difference between gouache and watercolour. Oh, thank you for the kind words, first of all. And with your question, um, I guess the texture, the versatility of it. With watercolour, you, you have more limitations than with gouache. Um, a lot of people say you can work with gouache as it was watercolour. I kind of don't feel that way just because every time I tried using gouache as watercolor it didn't really work but um, I feel for the last few years I've been I've considered myself an expert with watercolor I only used watercolor and little by little I've been jumping to gouache because just how vibrant the colors can really be um, with watercolor you need very good quality ones like very good quality watercolors for for the colors to really show um so that's something i really really appreciate from gouache gouache like how how easy it is to get nice colors also i was a very blendable person whenever i use watercolor i pay a lot of attention to the blending i i like very like um blended areas but with gouache, I kind of don't appreciate those um, looks that much. I'd rather go a bit more rough around the edges and just um, kind of look at more 
or intuitive, intuitive. Oh my god, I can't say that word. Thank you. Like, I, I would consider this has been also a learning experience for me, really. Like, I normally paint um, white persons in my paintings, just because I'm more familiar with it. And I'm going to paint a dark tone colour person. It, it, is, it is a challenge for me, so I think I've been learning a lot in this painting. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to practice my my painting skills, my melanin <laughs> painting. Let me blend this shadow. I want to have a light pink in this arm just because I feel like um, I like this area that it's underpainted but because this hand is the, in the top of the painting I think it should be it should have more paint than the rest I don't know why it's just a feeling I guess with this kind of paintings, you need to trust your guts. Guts. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Okay, I'm gonna go back with my tiny brush and do more lines because I really like the the look of it. I'm gonna go with. Sometimes when you want to do detail brush, you need to like put your hand down, but because the paint is still um, uh, wet, I normally like put this bit of the hand on the painting and just try to be very, very careful. Got the runoff. Thank you for doing this. Thank you so much. Oh my god, you're gonna get emotional. Thank you for joining, guys. You make it worth it. <laughs> if I was here all alone, I'll be very, be feeling very sad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with red. No. I was about to do this line here, but I think I, I prefer it this way. I might draw the ear. Because I don't want an empty space around here, I'm just going to go with a dark red. I think I'm close in, very close to finish this. Gonna add a few more um, colors. 
and the white areas. Not very happy with that nose. Um, don't know what to do to it. Oh, está cría. And I want to get rid of this shadow, so I'm just gonna. Oh, I got a lovely color. Um, remember that light green I did the other, like one hour ago. I'm using the same. Okay, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it like as it is. Don't want to overwork it and. Can't really have the strength right now to go to keep going. So feel free to keep working on it. It's still the morning here there in the States, so you have a long time to keep working. It's eight o'clock right now here. I'm a bit tired. Oh, I almost forgot. I want to do the under eye, um, doing a dark purple. And in the other side, I'm gonna go with a more It's midnight. I think it's very common for me to say, oh yes, I'm almost done. I'm gonna be done in a minute and all just a few more details and like half an hour later, I'm still working. So I'm seriously, I want. Okay. Really need to finish. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. Thank you so much for raising Russian. Thank you, Anita, for joining again. Remember your name. You remember we talked. Thank you all for joining. Oh. Let me finish just one second. I feel like I'm in an exam. I need to finish very quickly. Try to get the colors to match the photos. That was being a fantastic education to me. Muchas gracias. Thank you so, 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 so much for joining again. Um, okay, I'm done. I'm done, completely done. It ended up looking not as I expected, but not bad at all. Um, hopefully I can see your, uh, your drawings on the Sketchy app um, or in the like, official website. Um, hopefully you'll join uh, Thanksgiving. Oh, let me... Hello! <laughs> it's so dark in this room. Um, again, Thank you, thank you so, so much for joining. Um, it's been lovely painting this, even though I'm not feeling very well. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Let me show you with this camera. It's always showing from a very distant, um, like distant, how do you say? Uh, perspective and with, other, with another camera is very different. I would say it looks much similar to my camera just here on the top okay hope you have a lovely day and i'll see you in the next one bye